visions, dreams. My mind's playing tricks on me. <laughs> visions, dreams, divine communication. My mind, thoughts, the spirit. Visions, thoughts, divine communication. My mind is playing tricks. Visions, thoughts, divine communication. My mind is playing tricks. We want to start off giving all praises due to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, and respect and charity to all you soldiers. To all you soldier, soldiers, Shalakia, in a battlefield, pushing this word, being guided by the Holy Spirit, the blueprint of Yahweh Shah implanted in your mind. Okay? This is part three. Part three. And it brings out <clears throat> the book. In the New Testament, it brings out the book of Revelation. Here, the vision is always the medium of a revelation to the seer. Read it again. The book of Revelation. Here, the vision is always the medium of a revelation to the seer. Now, Paul, he receives visions in the night. Or oh, how does Paul receive visions through the night? Let's go to... Acts 16.19 Acts 16 Salaka Acts 16 and 9 Acts 16 and 9 And a vision appeared to Paul in the night there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. Okay. It says, come over to Macedonia and help us. Okay. Verse 10. It says, and after he had seen the visions immediately, we endeavored, endeavored to go. Into Macedonia, as shortly gathering the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Okay, so that was what Paul received. He received what a, a vision, because you got to remember the Book of Revelations. Here, the vision is always the medium of a revelation to the seer. Okay, and Paul receives visions in the night. Goes back to um, it goes back to um. Job 33.15 Job 33.15 Okay, now let's go to Acts 18.9 Acts 18.9 Then spoke the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision Be not afraid, but speak This is in red Then spoke the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision and it's written in red. It says, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. And he continued there a, a, a year and six months, teaching the word of the most high among them. Okay, so that's poor vision. Poor had a vision. And it said to come to poor what? In a trance. Now let's go to Acts 10 and 10. Acts 10 and 10. Acts 10 and 10. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. He had a vision of this. Okay, they go another vision, a trance. Remember, visions, trance, dreams, 
vision, trance, dreams, vision, trance, dreams. It goes together. Okay. Now let's go to Acts 11 and 5. I was in the city of Jaffa praying. And in a trance, I saw a vision. A certain vessel descended as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by the four corners. And it came even to me. Okay. Another Another vision, trance, dreams. All right. Genesis 15 and 12. Genesis 15 and 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. And lo, in horror, a great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abraham, Know of surety that the seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. This was a vision. Okay? This was a trance, a dream. Okay? He fell in what? Deep sleep. Divine communication. Okay? He was letting him know the future time. Okay? The thing that was going to take a place to, um, to Israel in the future. Okay? And then let's go to, um, what is that scripture? Genesis, hold on. Give me one second. That's the spirit. Right there, it's going to come to me. Oh, here it is, Genesis 49. It says, And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall on you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear you, sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel for your father. Right, he said, Gather yourself together. Let me tell you, because that's what a prophet means. That's what the word prophet, seer, means. To tell beforehand, right? So he's telling Israel, What's going to happen to them in the latter days beforehand, before it even happened? OK, divine communication. How would you get this gift? OK, the, and I'll tell you something else. The word. Um, they also say to um, what's that? Let me just get my thoughts together. They say. Um, even um, Satan communication. Right. Through astrology, through black magic, through evil. Right. He tells them he tells the people that enchant him that things are supposed to take place. OK. Beforehand. OK. From the left hand, from the left, from the left hand side. Right. And that's why people go to a medium. OK. They, they, they go to Satan for their communication. All right. For their wicked, evil communication. To rule in wickedness. All right. And how did he talk to them in a trance? How does Satan do, 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 um, leads his communication? Okay. Through a trance. Through a vision. Through a dream. Okay. That's how. That's what the word prophet means. Okay. Now that's it on that. I did um, Genesis 15. Now give me. I'm going to give you Acts 22, 17. Two, 17 and it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem even while I prayed in the temple I was in a trance and saw him saying unto me make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem for the will not for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me okay so how did he communicate with him through his divine communication, right? A trance. That's the key word, a trance, a dream, divine communication, thoughts. Okay. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians.
Second Corinthians. Twelve, one and seven. It is not expedient for me. Doubtless to glory, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Let me read that again. Second Corinthians 12 and one. It is not expedient for me. Doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and. And revelations of the Lord. Visions and revelations. What does revelation mean? We know what that means to reveal. Okay? Pull back to uncover. What to uncover the truth. Right? Is that not a thought process? Is that not divine communication coming from the Heavenly Father, which is the Spirit? Ru'ah into man, the breath of life. Now let's jump to Verse seven, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a throne in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Remember, I just said that lest I should be exalted above measure. OK, that's it on that. I'm just showing you the divisions in the trend. Now, let's go back to Second Corinthians 12 and 2. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, wherein the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. The Most High know, such one caught up to the third heaven. Okay. Okay, let me read that whole thing. And I knew such, this is 2 Corinthians 12. I read 1 and 7, but now I'm going back so you can catch this. Rev, um, 2, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12 and 2. I knew a man in Yahweh above 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God know. Such and one court up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. The Most High know how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such and one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirm infirmities. Verse 6, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he sees me to be, or that he hear of me. Refrain. Verse 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. Right? Because the revelation, how do you get to that? How do you get revelations? You can't call yourself a prophet. You know what I'm saying? A real, you can't, you can call yourself a prophet, but you'd be a prophet of the saint, of Satan. Because true divine communication comes from the most high. Even though we know even Satan worked for the most high. We know that when you look up the book, book of Job, chapter one. OK. He's a he's in the military of the most high. OK. He carries out the most highest plan. OK. He said, do what you ever do what you want to Job. You know what I'm saying? But do not take his life. OK. That's what he said. That's an order. You can do what you want. Test him out. See what he about. You know what I'm saying? But you can't take because he, he made a challenge with him. In the book of Job, chapter one. OK. Lest any man should think of me, verse seven, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations. There was given to me a throne in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Verse nine. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Read that again. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. OK. And then remember, we read verse seven with the verse seven. All right. Now, let's go back to Acts, the book of Acts. Acts, we're going to go to Acts 9 and 3. Acts 
Acts 9 and 3. And he and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. Uh oh. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecute thy me? Trance, vision, divine communication. And he said, Who are thy Lord? And he and the Lord said, I am Yahweh, whom thou persecute. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. What? You can't kick against the pricks of the Most High. You can't stop his his um transfiguration. You can't stop his motive. You can't stop his process. You can't stop his will to be, his will to come. It's evident that it's going to take place. That's what everything is about. Even man's going, you know what I'm saying, on this earth. It's the man thinks he's going of, of himself, but it's not. It's the process and thoughts through the divine communication of the Heavenly Father. Okay? Acts 22 and 6. Acts 22 and 6. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come to night in Demichius about noon, and suddenly there shone from heaven a great light around about me. Okay? That's the same thing. Divine communication. Let's go to 26 and 12. A trance. A vision, a dream. 26 and 12. 26 and 12. Twenty-six and twelve. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining around about me and then was journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecute me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Right. You can't kick against the pricks. You can't stop the process in the, in the, um, the prophet, the, the prophecy of the Lord. Okay. Because a prophet is only prophesying the, the the Lord's word, His thought, His process, His process to to the um to Israel first and foremost, the elect. The elect is only going to get this calling because they're going to be in one sound, one mind of what of Yahusha. Okay. Now we're going to go to um. We, okay, you know, you can read this on your own. And visions visions are recorded in Luke chapter one and two. Okay. You could get read that on your own. Visions are recorded in Luke chapter 1 and chapter 2. These are visions. Luke chapter 1 and chapter 2. Okay? Now let's look up um, Matthew 17 and 9. Matthew 17 and 9. And as they came down from the mountain, Yahweh charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Visions, dreams, trance, divine communication. Okay? Now, hold on for a second. I want to get, I want to read you something. Um, this is it's small, it's not big. Okay. Trance. This is in that um the the the, the um the reference dictionary of the Bible, dictionary of the Bible, edited by James Hastings. Okay. Now it says trance, a condition in which a uh, trance. A condition in which the mental powers are partly or wholly unresponsive to external impressions while dominating by subjective excitement or left free to contemplate mysteries incapable of apprehensions by the usual rational, rational process. Read that again. A trance, 
a condition in which the mental powers are partly or wholly unresponsive to external impressions while dominated by subjective excitement or left free to contemplate mysteries incapable of apprehensions by the usual rational process. The word occurs in the Old Testament in Numbers 24, 4, and 16, and in all, in Acts 10 and 10, Acts 11 and 5, Acts 22 and 17. And then it says what? See further dreams, visions. It says see further dreams, visions. Now just to close it out, I want to give you this last part. This was my root of this whole um, thing. Okay. Let me start at um, Job 33 and 15. It says, In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep fall upon men and slumbers upon the bed, then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instructions. Okay. The Most High, where it says in verse 16, then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instructions. Brother Shema, Swore to the Point, Episode 3, um, Dreams, Visions, Divine Communication, Shalom.